G'day mates, Pocket Dragon here. So, Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear were an absolute classic for me years ago. And I also did a review of that game. If you want to see a review of the first game, click here to check it out. But as of right now, it's time to look at the sequel. It's time to review Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Master System and the Game Gear. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Master System version was released in Europe on October the 16th, 1992 and in Brazil around the same time. The Game Gear version was released in Europe on October 29th, 1992, North America on November 17th, 1992, and in Japan on November the 21st in 1992 being released before the 16-bit version for the Mega Drive and the Genesis, the 8-bit editions of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 represented the debut of the character Miles Tails per hour, uh, who became a recurring character in the series. South Island has been peaceful since Dot and Robotnik's defeat in the first game, Sonic now bored decides to go on a journey in search of other adventures. Upon his return, he is shocked to find the island nearly abandoned. The only clue as to where all of his friends might have disappeared to was Tails being chased by Dr. Robotnik. Sonic chases after him, but he was too late to save Tails. Sonic finds out that he's been captured by Dr. Robotnik and is being held in a place called the Crystal Egg. The price for Tails' safe return are the six Chaos Emeralds to be delivered to six new boss robots. Thus, Sonic goes on the quest to find the Chaos Emeralds and rescue Tails. But what if I don't want to get all the Chaos Symbols? <laughs> What's Robotnik going to do? Kill Tails? Tails dies in this version? I know Robotnik wants to take over the world, but I never thought he would kill someone. Jeez. Like the previous game, Players take control of Sonic the Hedgehog as he makes his way through each of the game's seven zones, fighting against various badniks and overcoming deathly obstacles. By collecting rings, Sonic can protect himself against damage against enemies and obstacles, with the exception of pitfalls and drowning, with an extra life earned by collecting 100 rings. Unlike the previous 8-bit title, Sonic is now able to recollect some of his rings for a limited time after being hit. Other technical improvements allow Sonic to smash through certain walls and run through loops, which there should have been in the last 8-bit game! Also added to this iteration are gameplay mechanics unique to certain zones, such as riding a minecart, using a hang glider to glide across the air, skimming across the surface of the water, and floating inside giant bubbles to reach higher areas. And unlike the Genesis and the Mega Drive version, Sonic does not have the spin dash or could turn supersonic when you collect all the emeralds. And unlike the previous game, the game no longer features the shield and no checkpoints. You heard me right, no checkpoints. That means if you lose a life, you're sent back to the beginning of the stage. Each of the game's seven zones consists of three acts, the third of which consists of boss battle, most of which now consist of animal-based robots as opposed to the direct confrontations with Dr. Robotnik, in which the player is not given any rings to collect at the end of each of the first two acts. Players can potentially earn bonuses such as additional rings, lives, and continues by fulfilling certain criteria upon hitting the act's goalpost such as having a specific amount of rings. The first five zones, a Chaos Emerald is hidden somewhere within the second act, and unlike the last game, which emeralds are easy to find and you have to go out of your way just to find one, in this game, they're hard to find and easy to miss. Like in Zone 2 Act 2, where you have to bounce on specific clouds just to reach the emerald that's hidden in the clouds. Trust me people, you need a guide to find these Chaos Emeralds, otherwise you're not finding them. The five emeralds along with the six earned from defeating the six zones boss are required to access the game's seventh zone, and ultimately achieve the game's good ending by defeating the game's final boss. Otherwise, the game will end after the sixth zone with Sonic unable to rescue Tails. Unlike the Genesis version, the Master Sister and the Game Gear version has some new levels. Underground Zone. 
This is the level where you run into the minecart mechanic. Sky High Zone. In this zone is where you introduce the hang glider mechanic. Aqua Lake Zone. I hate this level, I hate this level, I hate this level! I've died to this level so many times. And also this level introduces the water skimming mechanic and the floating bubble mechanic. Green Hill Zone? This is a relaxing level, where you have a chance to score a bunch of lives, and also, the song used in this zone is also used in a Sonic CD cutscene. <laughs> Gimmick Mountain Zone Similarities with Scrap Brain Zone from Sonic 1 around here, as do Spikes. Count on everything in this strange monochromonic level to explode. Scrambled Egg Zone. The stage's primary difficulty comes in the form of dozens of assorted transport tubes in the stage, which are maze-like in execution. There's only one thing that this scrambled egg zone needs. Bacon. Lots of bacon. Crystal Egg Zone. The seventh zone in the Game Gear and Master System version of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 features bright, vibrant colors that mask the difficulty of hardest stage in the game. The boss is a different story altogether, and his stage is almost entirely black. Spikes are plentiful here, as expected, and it is very subtle last level. You can only get here by attaining all the Chaos Emeralds, otherwise the game will end after beating Mecha Sonic in the Scrambled Egg Zone, leaving you to view the bad ending. It is also possible to get here via the level select, but the bad ending will be displaying in this case as well. And with the Game Gear version, it plays the same, but there's one thing that makes the Game Gear version harder than the Master System version, and it comes down in two words. SCREEN CRUNCH! This makes it hard to see upcoming threats. Do yourself a favor and just play the Master System version. You know what? When I saw Tails on the front cover of the box, on the title screen, in the pictures of the stage's loading screens, and in a cutscene, I was getting the feeling that Tails would have been playable at some point. So, I made it my mission to find every Chaos Emerald, and I did. I got all the Chaos Emeralds, I rescued him, so what's my reward, game? What is it? Oh, come on! That's it? No Chaos? I just wasted my time just for a good ending? Wow, what a ripoff! Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is not a bad game. It can get really difficult at times. I just wish the Chaos Emeralds were a little easier to get, rather than putting them in hard-to-find places. I just wish there's more to the Chaos Emeralds than just accessing the 7th level and rescuing Tails and getting a good ending. Come to think of it, this game also makes me think on why Tails was mentioned so many times throughout the whole game to begin with. I mean, he's not even playable in the game, so why mention him? I mean, according to the pictures I see, he looks like he's even playable. If you want to play this game, just play it on the Master System, not the Game Gear. Well. That's all I got to say about this game. I haven't really played any other 2D Sonic games, but I did play the Sonic Advance games. I might look into those in the future. But, as for my next review, we will look into a game that I've been playing on Facebook lately. Until then guys, this is Polkhead Dragon, and I wish you guys happy gaming.